La brioche. The brioche. La the preparation we're going to make today is a brioche dough, and by this we mean not the puff dough that's typical uh, of when the dough is ready. <clears throat> the brioche dough is kind of laid out with butter and it become, becomes a puffy um, dough. We will try to understand what the main ingredients are. We're using flour, medium flour, W220-340, some brewer yeast, so it's a direct dough and we're directly putting the brewer yeast in the dough. We're going to close some butter. We'll insert it at a temperature of around 12-14 degrees. As we said in many video classes, the temperature, the beginning temperature is always proportional to how much heat the machine emanates in the environmental temperature. So the sugar, then we have some honey, or we can use some malt. The aromas, orange, lemon and vanilla. Clearly it is not necessary, necessary to put them all. We will put some vanilla and some lemon zest, some eggs and, and some milk. So technically, how do we start this preparation? You've already seen during our video classes, there is the introduction part in which we talk about the methods of insertion, which basically are two. I remind you that we, during these videos, are trying to give you all of the competencies to then talk about to topics that are more and more complex. Technically, there are two ways of insertion, a direct uh, method and an, an indirect method where we're using a big or a sourdough. Apart from this difference, so the type of yeast, the mechanical phase is more or less the same. There are not many differences. So, we're putting the powders first, always sifted. So we're going to take our sift. We're going to take the flour. Sift. Always remember that this is important because in some environments in which we preserve flowers there might be some damp, some humidity and so sifting more than once is not wrong. We're taking our brew yeast, fresh, and we're going to crumble it directly in our flour. Always remember that if the brew yeast is too soft and you can't crumble it, dissolve it in the liquid you're going to use in your recipe. Now we're going to oxygenate our product a little bit. If you want to oxygenate it more, you can uh, run the first step with the leaf paddle. So the fat is going to be put at the end, we will also put a small part of salt, this will be needed for the balance of the flavor, of course. The aromas, we're going to put them directly in direct contact with the butter, because as we very well learned, butter has this big capacity of fixing and extracting the essential oils of, in this case, of brooms, vanilla, aromatic herbs and spices. The sugar is going to be put right away. Apart from the sugars that are already present in the sugar and also the honey. So we're going to add the sugars right now. The lard will always be close to grease our bowl at the end of our preparation. And the liquid part, when we talk about sweet leaven desserts, the liquids are milk and eggs, average. 
when we talk about an alcoholic part, it must always be put after the liquids. So I can join both my elements. So when you have water and milk, you can join them. And they must be put at a proportion of 70-30 or 80-20, because even if we are using always the same balance, we might have a minor absorption of the proteins in the flour. So it's always best to not put all of the liquids together. Don't put them all together. Uh, we're going to put the sugar. When we're talking about honey or malt, what I advise to you is that even if we're talking about sugars, don't put them in the beginning because it might disturb the first phase of kneading. So put the liquids right and right after add the liquid sugar. because it will be e easier for the liquid sugar to be added in the base. So we're increasing the speed a little bit. And inserting our 80% of liquid. Okay, don't insert it too late, the, the, the remaining 20%. So within more steps, now we're going to insert our inverse sugar. I'm going to prepare our butter with the aromas. So as we said, we're going to put everything together the vanilla, the salt, and the orange. Remember that if in your ingredients you have alcohol, it must be put right after the liquid part. Now we're going to close our dough, starting to insert the butter. This quantity is okay, more or less. So lower the speed and insert the butter. Don't put the butter too, too early, because if the structure hasn't closed yet, the butter might disturb the continuous formation of gluten. Don't put it too late because once the dough is externally sealed, the butter <coughs> wouldn't incorporate very well. Remember the temperature of the butter if you notice that the dough is getting too warm, last chili positive. Just to rebalance the temperature of the butter and then you can go on. As we are waiting, we're going to take our bowl and greasing it. Always remember that we are using lard. Clearly, every professional for flavor or cost reasons can use other types of fats. Rice oil, seed oils, so peanut, some flour. Butter has been absorbed. Let's go with the set the second part of the butter. Adesso, 
Now we're going to start to increase the speed to give a movement that's more open, wider. Always reminding you that the best movement is this type, so with double arms, so we can incorporate more air and give a better structure to the gluten for the that will be useful for the next stages. Here too, same thing. Keep your machine keep a pressure on your machine and remember the main um, indicators that make you understand that the dough is about to be ready. Here it's more visible compared to sourdough or um, or biga. Here we added the butter which softens the dough a little bit so we're noticing that from a rough phase our dough starts slowly um, getting towards the top, so moving towards the top and it will attach to the hook and it will hurt, it will smooth out by hurting the sides of the bowl after which, only visually, we will detach, so turn off the machine we will realize if the external structure is smooth, homogeneous, compact If you can notice, it is it is getting more and more towards the top. So this hitting movement in the um, in the sides of the bowl will be more and more um, evident. Be careful! It is important in this phase to check on the temperature. Always remember that we never have to go over 24 degrees because we might not have any more control in the second phase which will be the activity of the yeast in general and based on the type of rising that we want to uh, achieve the yeasts tend to start in a way that's very fast at a temperature of around 25-27 degrees so we, we want to maintain the control over this phase we must be careful not to heat the dough too much why did I say 24 degrees? because for us it's almost as if it were a point a ratio point I know that after that if I work too much with the machine and I get to over 27 degrees I will not control the activity of the yeasts anymore and they will quickly uh, reproduce and so I won't have an active benefit out of them so let's increase the speed in this last phase it is a very subtle noise because the noise of the machine is much stronger but <clears throat> every now and then you can feel the hitting the dough hitting the sides of the bowl clearly be careful about the temperatures especially in this phase because we the other thing is that we don't have to overheat the butter so the dough is raising more and more the heating is more and more present the heating noise Now the heating is very strong, we realize it from this noise and we'll try to, we will try to understand 
if um, if the dough is ready otherwise we will keep kneading so lifting as you can see from this side here I'm going to push I don't have a sticky effect so it's quite sealed it's quite isolated so this makes me understand see any intention of the hook it's very smooth so these are the first indicators and they're positive quickly removing it from the machine removing our machine and we're going to remove the dough with a scraper so with very very short movements and quick movements now we're going to work directly with the scraper just like this very gently And we'll, we'll do the same we were doing before, but clearly the mass is much more elastic. You can see the smooth structure of the mixture. I'm going to insert the hands underneath very sweetly, very gently. Clearly this is a type of dough that allows me, if, if we had a more hydrated dough, I should have worked it directly on the working surface using the scraper. See that I'm putting it slightly in a diagonal angle and pushing, just like this. This is the closing of a dough. Always alternating. Since I have some fat on the working surface, I don't need to put other um, some more fat on the brioche dough. So I'm closing. And closing the dough, just pushing. Moving this piece of vanilla here. Now we're going to put the dough in our bowl. And then plastic film, and we're going to let it rest in the fridge of plus 3 degrees if we want to have a 15 to 18 hours rising. Or if we need the product within this day, we're going to let it rise at 18, 20 degrees. So it would be optimal, optimal to have a leavening chamber or you can let it rest in a fresh environment so we put our plastic fill always with some holes on the surface four to five holes no more and from here if we decide to work during the day when the product tends to double its beginning volume it means that we can step to the next phase and this is it for the first part about the brioche. Let's take our brioche back. So we had a... We put it at 18-20 degrees. When the volume has tripled in size, we can work with it. So after the first leavening, we're going to put the dough on our working surface very delicately. And we're going to break it into pieces and shape the pieces. So we're going to divide our dough. We will make it into six pieces. When you finish with the pieces, already 
remove one piece of the dough which will be needed to make the top, the upper part of the brioches. Now we have to close it again but a little bit more softly. So again clean working surface, no flour. Eventually if you need just grease your hands a little bit but very slightly because the fat might give a sliding effect. Again, maybe with two hands so that we are a little bit more dynamic. Always being very tidy. So the more we contain our brioche, the more we'll have a product that's visually tidy and pleasant. Perfect, so do not exaggerate. And then the top, we're going to basically do the same. It will be a little bit more difficult for the quantity but the movement is kind of the same. So I'm ke keeping the dough between the thumb and the base of my hand. And now what we're going to do is pushing with the index like this, forming a sort of little tree. So at half of the dough I push and roll. Now, we have to insert them in our brioches. So we're going to take water, push like this. Remember that you don't have to touch the bottom. So it does, does not have to, have to be a hole. You just have to enlarge it. And we're going to let it inside. And then just modeling it and shaping it a little bit. Now with the scraper, we're going to place it on our baking tray. Pushing, enlarging, and inserting very quickly the top. Once again. It's important, even after having done this, to avoid that during the second leavening phase it might detach, to remodel it before the second leavening. So we're going, we're going to put it on our baking tray and you're going to just shape eventual imperfections but especially to improve the adherence always try to move it so that especially in the central part so always second leavening remember quick leavening 25 27 degrees 40 minutes one hour if you have time and you want a more homogeneous growth 18 to 20 degrees and it will take two hours and a half to three hours. After cooking you can improve the external structure by brushing with milk, eggs or a mixture of the two. After you have brushed them, I'm going to cook them in the oven 
180 degrees for 20-25 minutes. At the end of the cooking we're going to let them cool down. The brioche is inside, you make an incision on the surface or on the side to be stuffed. Usually one of the most common stuffings is coffee granita and this is it for the brioches.